everyone. My name is Costa, and I'm here to um, talk about my uh, security research on MicroTIC. Uh, the research itself is quite specific, but uh, as I was uh, working on it, I um, was trying to make it as applied as possible for uh, production networks, and I tried to avoid all the more typical uh, methods like brute force. In my demos, uh, uh, the videos may potentially trigger seizures for people with uh, photosensitive um, brain. Uh, please be careful. This research is intended for pen testers and red team operators who run uh, uh, pen testing under a contract. They also are the organizers of the conference and are responsible for any harm caused by the use of the information presented herein. The first thing to start with is um, uh, route OS issues. I'm going to discuss certain issues with uh, network security in the context of route OS. One of the issues is the absence of the DNA, uh, dynamic hub inspection system. It's a system that prevents uh, up spoofing. And it's based on two-step uh, configuration. It tests, uh, uh, checks our cards, and then using a special table, it checks the uh, correspondence between special addresses and MAC addresses. But this uh, critical element of network security is missing from router OS security. Instead, the vendor suggests using the reply-only uh, configuration. And in fact, it's a static table that in big corporate networks is quite um, uh, unfeasible. And if you need to integrate it into a large corporate network, it will definitely confuse any network engineer and scare him away because um, uh, running a static table is a rather bothersome uh, process. Uh, RA guard is yet another uh, function that prevents minimum attacks by sending out false advertisement uh, messages. This component is also missing in the router OS and Ragat could prevent medium 6 uh, using the uh, medium 6 uh, attacking tool. It sends out false regard messages and it imposes itself as uh, an IPv6 uh, address, a DNS address, and thus it can capture the data inside the uh, link uh, or uh, it can organize uh, meet Medax. DP abuse. DP is uh, discovery protocols. They are special protocols of the link level. Uh, network devices can exchange information between themselves along these protocols. Usually they are found in production networks to ensure correct operation of IP telephony and to simplify the process of uh, debugging. The system engineer will do the troubleshooting and will understand um, what device on the other side is uh, currently working in route OS. The discovery protocols are active by default and they are sent out to all ports, if I'm not mistaken. Discovery protocols are supported by route uh, 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 OS, and the problem is that these protocols contain sensitive information that attackers can use for their own purposes. So, say, uh, if the attacker sees a certain uh, version of uh, the uh, router firmware, it will be, uh, the attacker will be able to find the relevant uh, uh, firmware. Uh, and for the practical information, I'm going to show you a demo on DP abuse. A demo. To analyze discovery protocols work, I used Wireshark. I captured an MITP uh, packet, and I know the MAC address. Of course, you can find out the MAC address at the link level by enumerating the frame as part of the MAC address as a source. You can see the version, the platform, you can see the uptime software ID, you can see the board. Board is in this header, the inform uh, it contains the information about the model of the router. Also, in the MADP context, you can also disclose the name of the interface. It's not uh, high-impact information, but it's uh, part of the discovery protocols. Uh, the attacker can see that. An IPv4 address is just the address of this router. And the attacker can use the address to organize brute force and uh, exploration attacks. 
even though we have the second frame, this is the CTP uh, frame, Cisco Discovery Protocol, although it works outside of Cisco Microtik also uh, supports this um, header. And Microtik and CTP headers contains information software, software version. Over here, you can see it's version 7.6. This is the port ID. That's the address. And the host name, uh, host name home in this case, and TTL as well, and uh, all other bits and pieces of information. So the attacker, knowing this, will be able to um, set up uh, uh, the offensive vectors and develop them inside the network. Spoofing, VRP, um, V3 spoofing. Uh, VRP is a protocol um, uh, from the FHRP class. V -V VRRP uh, creates host standby. This is done by combining physical routers into one logical group, and then in this logical group, a logical router is set up with a virtual IP address, and it will be set up as a default uh, address for uh, and host. VRP is used by default in the context of router IS, OS, and network engineer in most cases would not consider the completeness uh, of the um, configuration of the router OS. In Microtik, VRP uh, is version Three, which creates additional issues because it doesn't have authentication mechanisms. V for this VRP protocol, there is a document known as RFC 5798. It's an L3 protocol. It means that the uh, for service information um, is not transported over the transport uh, layer, unlike in other protocols. MCAST is 2024-0018, which is multicast uh, addressing VRP uses it to send uh, service information. There are uh, there is also master or backup states. VRP master is the router in the logical group uh, that services the traffic and the infrastructure. It works for everything, for everyone, basically. Then we have VRP backup, which is the router inside the logical group, which uh, stands by and does not service the client infrastructure traffic. So basically it does nothing, it stands lazy uh, and waits idle uh, till their master uh, is offline. Uh, why? Uh, VRP master sends the announcements every second. And if these announcements disappear after three seconds, uh, which is at that time uh, by default, in accordance with the hierarchical model and the context of priorities, one of the other backup routes uh, will have to stand in for the fallen master. VR ID is just an identifier of the logical group. When the logical group is set up, uh, it has a um, digital ID. VIP is the virtual IP address. It's just an IP address that's assigned to the logical virtual uh, uh, router, and must is responsible for it. And VRP MAC is just a virtual MAC address in the virtual of the virtual um, router. Two axes, the uh, axes stand in for the uh, number of the VRP group. How you can attack that? The problem is the attacker can organize an uh, FHRP hijacking type attack. A master role can be hijacked by sending malicious uh, VRP packets with maximum uh, priority. But there are several steps that must be performed. The first stage is uh, information gathering. The attacker will have to list certain uh, bits of information, like the group number, the use the virtual IP address, the master IP address, and whether there is authentication or not. And actually, in the second version of VRP, authentication is supported. In the context of router XIH, authentication is used. In version 3, authentication is missing, like I said. And a VRP domain, uh, you can't protect it in uh, that scenario. As far as I know, Route OS, the maximum value of priority you can set for the master is 254. And then the 255 priority backed up, uh, it just appears in the traffic. And VRP V3 can be protected by a special extended access list filtration that will disregard the packets or reject the other VRP packets. This tuning is achieved by a wildcard mask. Step two, you create a malicious VRP uh, injection with a maximum value of 255. In this demo, I used Skippy. What is this injection and how it will look like? I'll show you a bit later in the demo. Step three, you send a malicious uh, injection and 
you send a special GARP um, frame. It's a special uh, up frame modification mm -hmm. uh, uh, declaring a, a new um, association of the IP and MAC addresses, and the whole link segment uh, will be will know that you uh, capture this uh, space, and the clients will have now to associate the virtual address with your MAC address. That's why we need the GARP um, announcement or mailing. I'm going to show it to you during the demo. And the stage four is uh, route management uh, to prevent looping and uh, getting a meeting. The problem is after spoof in the spoofing process, a uh, routing loop is generated. For the attacker, um, the gateway address is equivalent by default to the virtual address inside the VRP logical router. And uh, this routing table will have to be readjusted to make sure that the routes by default are configured with the actual IP addresses of the former uh, masters that uh, lost their master role to the attacker. And after that, you also have to deal with asymmetric routing. Asymmetric routing is a process when traffic sent by one route, but is returned by a different path. And this is what happens during the spoofing attack. To deal with this issue, you follow a masquerade of rule and uh, IP tables. Uh, to show the impact, I prepared a small network, two virtual OS routers. Gateway one is the master, and the other one is the backup router. And the attack is inside the network and is associated with this customer network, which is behind this switch. Then, uh, to these two gateways, I attacked an FTP and SMTP uh, service because I need to capture the data during the spoofing attack. It's not a simple network, but um, it's enough to demonstrate the process. Well, it is a simple, it, it's a simple configuration, but it's enough to demonstrate the spoofing process. As I have already explained it, we start by gathering and listing the information. I will use Wireshark once more. We see at the moment the VRP master is a device with the IP address 10.10.100. Additional information is shown here. Priorities, the virtual number, and the virtual IP address. In my case, the number one, one is the identifier of this group. From this list of information, uh, well, this is what we can find out basically. Uh, VRP, uh, no authentication, version three, as I said, in the third version, there is no authentication. The VIP virtual IP address, and, and uh, the, the, the 254, uh, group one, and the router, master router uh, that must be used uh, in order to avoid the looping. And your device must be capable of standing this payload because the customer uh, traffic will definitely uh, uh, follow this path after the attack and your hardware should be able to sustain such a uh, payload. So the uh, CPU and the broadband, the throughput capacity should be sufficient to handle this traffic. Uh, step two is launching an attack. I switch the Ethan zero um, Interface. After that, I need to allow the routing in Linux distributives. Uh, it's uh, disabled. Without this command, uh, routing will not happen in the uh, Linux distributives, and the, the traffic will all accumulate on your side. After that, you uh, make the malicious VRP injection, like I said, I used. Uh, this bit of code from my uh, VRP v3 spoofer. There's another function that passes arguments, but over here you see Python injects function as input data. We use interface group and attacker IP. I collect Ethernet frame, then L3 packet, IP address, the source, um, the IP address of the attacker, IP address. Uh, of the destination where 
this VR should be sent means to 40018, TTL should be 255, otherwise the legitimate VRP speaker will not accept this packet. After that, I collect the evil VRP layer, I use KP, um, I uh, indicate the version type 1, it's an upcode, uh, just a code uh, showing that it's a VRP message, which is type of an announcement, it's an announcement, we are going to send out announcements to the VRP speaker. The RIT I'm, ID, I'll just uh, state it's a group variable, the number of this uh, VRP uh, um, virtual group, priority to 55, the uh, malicious bit here is priority 255. Uh, that will uh, cause the spoofing. IP count means the number of IP addresses that uh, the master will uh, own, just one. And other list. In other list, this uh, virtual IP address will be shown as a list, will be indicated as a list. After that, I collect the devil uh, variable and using the slash, I will collect the data into one. Um, piece, the frame, the packet, and VRP layer, then send P, send P. I'll send this uh, packet, I, I indicate the interval, VRP uh, messages should be going out every second, just uh, like the legitimate VRP master sends them. If it's more than three seconds, the attack will fail and the legitimate master will be back online. Loop one, the packet send out should be indefinite until um, you are running the attack. And there was one, that's the output. The dots will indicate every um, sent out packet. And this injection I'm injecting into the network. Like I was saying, the script is parameterized. Three parameters, the group, uh, uh, IP address of the attacker, 10, 10, 190. I have already conducted the uh, send out. It started. Now I need to reproduce the hop injection. I do it using my specific tool called Creelty. It just sends out these frames. Actually, this tool can be the more aggressive version of uh, spoofing to meet more the link segment onto itself, but it's very specific and it's very experimental. Uh, this tool is also parameterized in the context of input data, we're showing the um, uh, interface ID and the MAC address on this uh, interface and the gateway address against which I'm running this injection. In my case, I want the link segment, all of it, to understand that this address, 10, 10, uh, 100, 254, I, w I want everyone to know that behind this address is my uh, MAC address uh, in order to be able to run a meeting. VRP spoofer and Creelty are running. Now we need to reproduce uh, route management. So the old route is deleted in my operating system. After that, I prescribe the new um, route by default, 10, 10, 100, 100. Before, for this attack, uh, the gateway uh, default address was 10, 10, 254. Then I create the secondary IP address at my interface. It's equivalent to this one, 10, 10, 100, 254. After the spoofing attack, I'm the master now, and I should be uh, responsible for this address, 10, 10, 100, 254. That's why I'm setting it up as the secondary address. Another important uh, case here, uh, you have to avoid tracing uh, the client. Uh, will try to trace us since uh, Meetum uh, attacks uh, generate an excessive hop. During tracing, our address will uh, be able to detect this extra hop and engineers will be outraged. I found uh, in the Mangal uh, table, and by the way, the Mangal table is the marker. Um, this is the pre-routing chain, and this is the chain that decides what will happen to the packet before it's routed. I uh, state the interface, and I'm going to shift the TTL 
for all packets on my interface with a plus one increment in order to avoid being compromised at the tracing level. My IP address in the tracing level will not be visible. This is how you avoid the same P uh, tracing. What about UDP uh, tracing? I can't tell you for sure. I did not consider this scenario, but uh, it, this will be necessary for trace route bypass. Having created the secondary IP address, I set, set up the last rule in the post routing table, which is masquerading, uh, simply masquerading to address uh, secondary uh, routing, to see the incoming and outgoing traffic, to see the full picture and not to lose any of the important uh, count data as an attacker, ATP creds and the such. Then using PCRADs, I'm going to collect the account data uh, that's there, because I created a midmo attack and PCRADs allows me to collect the data. PCRADs will show me whether I found any account data or not. The attack is already ongoing and the routing management is now completed. Uh, the target is Warehouse 2. As we can see, we collected this uh, hash, which can be brute forced or it can be relied, but um, the claim uh, user, this is uh, the user's data encrypted, the MIPM attack is uh, running, everything is correct, there is no DOS, network integrity was not compromised, and we uh, managed to get our hands on uh, the account data. Cluster Remix. It's the title of my very specific vector. It's very specific uh, pivoting vector against the Windows machine. The concept is to create a malicious a microtech router inside a compromised Windows machine to get L2 access using bridging technology. Uh, we'll start with a bit of background. So, uh, Andrei Zhukov uh, in June 2017 uh, launches a super spy penguin in Hacker Magazine. And his idea is that uh, there is a compromised machine, he sets up a Linux-based uh, virtual machine, and then you bridge it, and then you use OpenVPN uh, and get L2 access and uh, run L2 attacks. Why uh, the uh, L2 tunnels exist and why we need them? Well, link uh, level uh, attacks like uh, LTP spoofing or midmum 6 uh, attacks or LMNR, NRBOS and DNS um, protocols. Well, for all of that, you need L2 engagement. And L2 is the law for all um, attacks of this kind. To build L2 tunnels, dub interfaces are used, which is a virtual network driver that emulates Ethernet devices and builds L2 tunnels. When an L2 tunnel is built between the attacker and the client, basically the attacker will connect to the same network as the customer machine. And this is how the, the attacker will get L2 access and the attacks can be launched. Um, based on Sawyer's idea, an idea occurred to me. What if I run Microtik SH1? This is a Microtik virtual uh, router. Uh, what's good about it, uh, you deploy it quite easily and quickly. It supports many virtualization technologies. Uh, it uh, uh, feeds Hyper-V, I think, uh, and definitely VMware and several others. Prologue 2, based on Sawyer's work, I build the following concept. Deploy MicroTik CHI inside Windows during post-exploitation. By the way, um, two sides. The first side is uh, you need to have access on, in the name of an admin. You'll have to set up a virtual box and work with network drivers inside the Windows OS. And the second side, or uh, a, a reservation, this works only uh, when you have real physical Windows-based machines. If a virtual machine 
uh, if you try to do it on a virtual machine, this uh, mode may not exist there, and pivoting will not work, and traffic will be stumbling, and this is very important. Micro 6 CHR network configuration, which is the second stage, you'll have to set up um, uh, Micro 6 CHR in the context of primary configuration and to bridge it to the virtual box. Then you create a full L2 tunnel using VXLAN. VXLAN basically is an extension of uh, LAN that creates uh, uh, tunnels over internet and encapsulates Ethernet frames into HTTP um, layer in a particular port. And after I have the tunnel, I will need VXLAN interface on the router. I'll have to place it into the bridge inside the Microtech CHR. I'm going to show to you how this is done in a demo. This is the um, actual arrangement. Uh, that's my uh, experimental uh, booth. A small network of the attacker and the other uh, user's network. And inside the user or customer network, we have a compromised Windows-based machine. The attacker is going to get uh, uh, access via VXLAN, and the tunneling scheme is as follows. In VXLAN terminology, uh, they speak about VTABs. There are devices inside VXLAN that encapsulate and decapsulate the headers. In our case, we have two uh, VTABs, the attacker and the malicious VXHR that uh, operates inside a Windows compromised machine. And there is a uh, tunnel between them, and these devices are VTABs. Taps. The vector can then evolve out of any point in the infrastructure. This Ethernet frame will definitely be encapsulated and sent over the um, link uh, using the VXLAN tunnel. VXLAN, by the way, is not the only protocol that uh, enables encapsulation of uh, frames. Uh, LTU3 was not over IP, and there are several, several others. It all begins with um, a virtual box. Oh, most people are used to use graphic um, envelope, but in pen test you don't always have the graphic envelope. But this um, packet uh, 787 using the uh, S argument, you will be able to install this virtual box in the silent mode without any visible uh, traces for a legitimate user behind this computer. Argument less S on the well, it took me one minute and 32 seconds to install it for the purposes of this demo. Use one command to install the virtual box. After that, you need to deploy the Microtik CHR uh, to automate the process. I used the path file, but uh, uh, both files are not uh, a good idea always because they can cause a CM alert and the attacker may be compromised. Maybe it's more reliable to do it manually, but to automate the process for this demo, I wrote the subfile. Uh, first, I define several variables to uh, determine the name of the special machine, the amount of uh, 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 memory to be used by this Microtik CHR, the cores of the CPU. The, uh, by the way, this virtual machine is created uh, using VDI disk drive. Uh, Microtik.com um, offered to me the original Microtik CHR. I downloaded it. It exists as a drive for the virtual box that can be used to set up a virtual machine. And when uh, creating the social machine, I just um, import this VDI image. Unfortunately, UNC Pass will not work here, and this VDI drive must uh, be physically uh, in the uh, Windows um, uh, uh, section. The virtual machine, its interface will be uh, set up in the bridge mode, the full name of the interface. To be used for breaching, the full name of the interface can be found uh, through Get Me Adapter in the envelope. And the Promise Cadeen uh, shows you that the interface of this virtual machine, of this VM, uh, should be promiscuous. And uh, the series of commands, uh, we create the VM, we set it up, uh, the cores, VDI drive is connected, network integrity promiscuous, and the uh, uh, breach mode. And the important uh, thing is headless uh, command. Uh, the headless will launch the VM. Headless shows that the VM will uh, be running in the silent mode. The user of the computer will never know that there is a virtual box installed.
world and that uh, computer and the VM is getting started. This argument is extremely important. Then using Remix part, I start the whole process. I create the VM and it gets going. Next step, looking for CHI in the network. Inside Micro 6 HI, uh, there is this big client configuration already. It shows you that Micro 6 HI will automatically try to find a GHCP based address using uh, a particular interface. To find this Micro 6 HI is not uh, difficult. The target network, sub subnets, is where this Windows cost is allocated that has this CHR. In uh, my demo, the address of the CHR is 192 136. After that, we must do primary configuring of micro 6 CHR. And here's my mistake. I only found it out recently. I think it would be best if this micro 6 CHR would be spoiled my side. Uh, I would configure it first, and after that, uh, when VDI is stored inside, uh, I need to deploy it inside the Windows Space machine. Why did I decide that? By default, the micro configuration contains the STP protocol, which may interfere with STP tree uh, operation. Uh, you will lose network integrity, and you will also lose. Um, the compromised Windows machine. So it's best if you run this process before deploying the uh, VM inside the Windows machine. This is primary configuration. Like I said, it consists of the following steps, creating the bridge, uh, uh, disabling STP, placing the interface into the bridge. Uh, after that, I move uh, uh, client to uh, bridge YDHCP client. This, uh, this other one actually will report to the bridge, and if either one has the address and bridge doesn't have the address, then the network integrity will be disrupted because this interface will, report, will be uh, subordinate to the bridge because the, the bridge needs to have the address. Uh, that's why I do the resetting and discovery protocols are disabled. CDP, LDP, MTP is not to draw any unnecessary um, attention of the subjects. Maybe there are checkers there or new neighbors in the TP context. After that, we connect to the CHR. And we uh, conduct the configuration. We, you can even use the web interface, up to you. It's, it depends on your preferences. The important thing is the commands are, are executed in one line via semicolon not to disrupt the network integrity. When the commands are executed, uh, for four and a half seconds, the console was frozen, uh, but probably it was just the initialization of JCP client when I moved it to bridge. IP address print. It's indeed 192.36. It's still on the bridge. I need to make sure. A remark. A bridge is a logical device inside the router uh, uh, OS. For it to exist in the link uh, level, it needs to have a MAC address. It's going to get it from the subordinate setting one and the same MAC address and the same uh, IP address on the uh, bridge. Uh, it's After that, you create the VXLAN tunnel. Another critical uh, moment, 32-bit uh, mask route must be created. When you create the tunnel and on your side you have the VXLAN interface that you will use to get the dynamic address, when you are done, your integrity, your connectivity will be disrupted because this tunnel will disrupt um, the reachability of uh, uh, CHR and that's why you need to set up this visible route using 32-bit mask. For the attacker, it's not a problem. With this command, there will be no disruption, no interruption. 
Then you set up the VXLAN interface. The Linux distributors know how to work with those interfaces the, using the IP utility. I will set up the VXLAN interface. How is this going to work? I will uh, determine this name. Uh, this is a VXLAN interface, um, and uh, this is the identifier of the tunnel. Ten, oh, by the way, they have their own identifiers, and it's important that on both sides they are the same. The ar argument local means uh, from which address the tunnel is built. Remote uh, is the argument that shows the destination of the VXLAN. In our case, we are building a VXLAN to the attacker, to CHR. And TST port, the default port of VXLAN is uh, uh, 4789, but it can be a different number of the port. The important thing is that this, it's the same on both sides. Then the interface must be uh, uh, put up. All configurations in the VXLAN is done. Now we need to configure VXLAN inside router OS. It's a two-step configuration. First, the interface, you state the identifier, the port, and then you go below, uh, uh, one level below, you set up the VXLAN interface, the remote address of the attacker, and the uh, 4789 port, and then the critical thing to move this interface into the bridge. In the bridge, the CHR interface looking towards um, the infrastructure of the window-based machine and the VXLAN tunnel to achieve the L2 access. And the final step, the attacker will get the address automatically inside that network. I use the road uh, del default. HCHCP protocol allows you to send the information via the gateway by default. The attacker may get the uh, address by default. It may uh, disrupt connectivity. I don't need that. And with the second uh, command uh, following a semicolon, I'm going to delete uh, the address. Pivoting is done. Everything is working. The attacker has the address, and now the attacker can communicate with that network. And the final step, stage six, the responder. It's a utility. I will just run it on the VXLAN interface to prove that um, it all worked out. We see the responder NIC um, VXLAN and the address 192.168.139. And then Windows machines in that infrastructure, I created a false OBNR um, in a query for the responder to be triggered. And this is how we get encrypted account data of uh, the Darkstep user. A very specific post-exploitation uh, vector, uh, ROS traffic hijacking is a vector that intercepts internal infrastructure traffic by abusing mirroring features. Uh, packet sniff uh, is a tool uh, to achieve that. The packet sniffer will mirror the traffic. It will mirror the traffic, uh, but this mirrored traffic must be sent somewhere. To send the traffic, we'll use TCSP protocol. Packet sniffer inside router OS is similar to spun uh, by Cisco, which not just mirrors the traffic, but also uh, sends it over L3 uh, connections. Router OS offers something similar, but using TCSP protocol, Tasman sniffer protocol, it's an encapsulation protocol that uh, is a tool to encapsulate uh, another protocol and send it over L3 connections. This is achieved using UDP uh, layer. The port number is 37008. Use, usually TZSP is used to build um, uh, operative system, uh, control systems, and to uh, build the TS systems uh, to send the original traffic, uh, or resend the original traffic to them. The uh, filtration uh, conditions, the source interfaces, the receiver address. In my case, uh, the receiver address will be 
the mirrored traffic of the um, the IP address of the attacker. That's the uh, idea to abuse the mirroring technology to make sure that the traffic is mirrored into uh, your direction. This vector allows you to intercept data inside infrastructure and filtering by protocols. This parameter is extremely important uh, because we need to filter the traffic uh, carefully. If you mirror too much traffic, the CPU will be overloaded and this will be unintended uh, DOS. This is the uh, arrangement, gateway one. I'm going to mirror the traffic from all interfaces. The attack can be inside the network, can be in a different part of the infrastructure. In any case, TCSP uh, will send all the traffic in my direction. Packet sniffer configured, uh, is configured in a simple way, tool sniffer. By default, it's disabled and it's not configured. You need to set it up. You'll have to configure the IP address also uh, to which the mirrored traffic will be sent. After that, you enable mirroring um, to use filtration and to identify the to be filtered protocols. When I recorded the demo, I thought about FTP um, and a couple of other protocols. I selected them to collect the data from them. After that, uh, with the start command, you start the sniffer, the mirror is already working, the traffic is already mirrored, it will be sent to the attacker. But it's not everything. The uh, TCSP to pick up is a special tool that will cut off the TCSP headers, then using pipe. I will indicate the start of Wireshark that's going to uh, work uh, on the basis of TCSP to pick up uh, findings, and I'm going to get the copy of legitimate uh, traffic with without TCSP headers. I initiated a test um, a TCSP uh, connection to demonstrate the impact, and here is the traffic from a different interface, from a different area of the infrastructure. I'm getting it through mirroring. The gear shift is the user and lies is the password. This is uh, the impact of this very specific vector. And last thing. The router OS um, uh, pivoting is a set of techniques that allow external resources by passing network isolation, network defense, and firewalls. Pivoting allows the attacker to expand the presence in the network. Pivoting can be achieved through various means by proxying and others. In my case, pivoting will be achieved through tunneling. There is a compromised uh, route OS. Internal infrastructure can be used for pivoting. The attacker needs to build a tunnel between uh, the attacker and the attacked. Uh, the targeted uh, route OS that was compromised to get access to internal infrastructure. The first protocol, GRE, uh, Generic Routing Encapsulation, is a network tunneling protocol that acts as a transport layer, doesn't uh, use the ports, uh, doesn't rely on TCP or UCP protocols, but it can uh, work as a transport protocol. It's uh, an old protocol, even uh, dating uh, the times pre-TCP IP stack, so it's hard to tell whether it's data layer or transport layer. It allows you to quickly resolve the problem of organized side-to-side -side connections between different network segments. Uh, by default, uh, GRE doesn't uh, have capabilities to protect traffic inside the tunnel. So if you see GRE in production, probably it will be secured by PC protocols like UAE plus IH. It can also happen. Uh, it was developed by Cisco engineers but it can run on any equipment, not necessarily Cisco. It's a transport, doesn't use port numbers. Uh, its ID is 47. GRE doesn't protect the data inside the tunnel. This is the tunneling scheme. Uh, we are uh, uh, attacking. Uh, the attacker has its own uh, node, and uh, there is a, uh, a, a tunnel built 
uh, between the two machines and internal addressing is established inside the tunnel, we must have internal addressing inside the tunnel for it to work. Uh, first, we um, generate the GRE interface inside the router OS. I state the name and the local address from which the tunnel will be built. In the context of this demo, addressing is not the same as I showed you on the scheme. The identifiers here are 140 and 150. This is the address from where the tunnel is built. This is the address for where it ends. Then I uh, state the internal IP address. The important thing is that tracing is inside the tunneling, inside the tunnel. The internal range is 10, 10, 10, 2. After that, I do the same on the attacker side. I use the same utility to build a GRE tunnel. It will be built uh, to the router OS and uh, the tunnel is up. And I configure the address 10, 10, 10, 1. Over here it's 10, 10, 10, 1, and on the other side it's 10, 10, 10, 2. And then we ping uh, to uh, uh, check the connectivity. Uh, if we can ping uh, the other side, then the tunnel is built. Then we do routing inside the uh, route OS. We see these networks 10, 10, uh, 10, 20, or 140, 160. So we can build the routes via 10, 10, 10, 2. This can be easily achieved. Three routes. And then the attacker can communicate with these networks and uh, expand uh, his or her offensive vectors. To demonstrate the impact, this is a map uh, disabled in as resolve against 10.10.140. There was keys. Uh, uh, I just uh, start the map scanning. And all of the traffic 10.10.140 will be sent inside the infrastructure because we build a GRE tunnel because uh, all of this is encapsulated. There is a GRE encapsulation. One second. And the map found lots of ports inside 10, 10, 140, or 5, 105 ports, host, sorry, and the uh, um, attacker can expand the offensive vectors using this tunneling technique. Another specific vector is a net uh, over IP pivoting, is a net over IP is proprietary protocol of Microtech. You can build L2 tunnels over the internet networks. So unlike VXLAN, this is achieved using GRE encapsulation. Uh, is there net over IP, in fact, is... Um, it can be, maybe it's a marketing trick, I don't know. It's just that it's not over IP, it's a copy of GRE tab interfaces uh, from the Linux distributives. They work in the same fashion. Prototype is the only thing that differentiates between these two functions. Isn't that for over IP as a prototype of 06004? GRE tab uses a prototype of OX6508 uh, or something like that. It's a proprietary protocol and it's used to build L2 tunnels. The map of pivoting looks like that. I will set up an Ethernet over IP uh, tunnel, but I will bridge it inside the existing bridge in the uh, borderline router. It's a proprietary protocol, like I said, but Linux distributives can also run it through the CatLogic custom module. Using it over IP, I found it somewhere on GitHub. The tunnel, the map, will look like this. Using it over IP, will build over internet, then all of this is bridged, and the attacker will be uh, capable of running L2 attacks inside the infrastructure beyond this router.
I compile the module already, but first I use IP tune top to set up the interface. It's a virtual network driver that emulates that devices will need it to attack at the link uh, layer that zero is uh, created. It's still down. We need to bring it up. Uh, I start the Ethernet over IP utility. I identify the uh, addresses and the interface. It also has the tunnel ID. It's just the identify of the tunnel, but in my case, uh, it equals 11, and it must be the same on both sides. And the router OS side to set up the Ethernet IP over IP interface. I just give it the name. Local address. A local address is the uh, address from which is not over IP will be built remote address is the address of the destination. A tunnel ID is 11. After that, the interface is breached. Inside, there is already a breach. That's my basic scenario. I just add this Ethernet over IP interface, uh, Nightmare uh, is the name I gave it. I just state uh, with which bridge it is associated. Just like in Custer Remix, we collect uh, the address in the automatic mode using DH client against tab 0. We see that tab 0 is now up. Ten ten seventy four thirty one is the address of the internal infrastructure that the to which the attacker got L2 access. And the launch of the responder step two to demonstrate the impact of this specific pivoting vector. I also initiated some false LMNR NetBIOS queries for the responder to be triggered. I enable purpose. This is the intercepted data. This brings me to the end of my presentation, and thank you very much for your attention. Hello, and thank you for a very interesting presentation on pivoting. The question towards the end, you talked about pivoting using GRE and E over IP. Uh, but I imagine that we have a router that's, that doesn't have direct access to the Internet. Instead, it's behind a net, it's behind a different uh, router. Without controlling those external routers, is it possible to set up a GRE tunnel or E over IP? Um, uh, can you do it by controlling just one in internal? Ethernet over IP uses Ethernet encapsulation. It can work over internet, but can also run inside the infrastructure. So I think the answer is yes. But uh, GRE, I think it has problems with NAT. Um, an overloaded NAT can be used, uh, and it, it can use uh, port numbers. But GRE doesn't operate port numbers. I never considered this case, but uh, basically it can work inside the infrastructure. Thank you for the question. You gave me an idea. I will try to test it out to see whether it works via NAT. Uh, GRE encapsulation, like I said, doesn't use ports, while NAT, uh, port address translation, it's a subgenre genre of NAT uh, is, is quite common. This is where we, we may have run into problems. So maybe you can use Ethernet over IP, um, but instead um, VXLAN pivoting, uh, there will be fewer problems with it. So if we control the routes inside the network, but we do not control some uh, external uh, routes, it's best to build VXLAN tunnel. Yes, uh, and then NAT will not uh, interfere. Yes, VXLAN, I think, passes the NAT uh, just fine. Okay, thanks. Hi. It was an amazing presentation. I have just one comment. When you were configuring MicroTik CHR and then you used you scanned the network. Well basically you can avoid that step, especially if you don't want to be detected. 
since you set up a virtual box, you already have access to box managed. You can see the data of the network card, the bridge network card, and it will contain the IP data. How come CHR has yet collected the address? Oh, do you mean? No, no, no. When you oh, when you already have the address, when you already have and use oh, okay. Instead of mapping, you can just uh, look at me. Oh, you, you can done it. No, this is risky. You first scan the target uh, network to see which addresses are taken and then um, to set up a static address. But probably you will frame yourself. Um, probably you need to run a scanning first. Uh, what if there are triggers? What if... Yes, without scanning. You can just check which one is assigned and that's it. Oh, okay, thanks. Thank you for the presentation. Can we find the uh, presentation? A micro nightmare will be published at Hacker as an article. I'll try to do it this month, so it will be available on Hacker and also on my channel. I did showcase of uh, pivoting, and you can find Custer pivoting on my uh, channel and the links to my channel. You will find um, at my off-zone speaker page. Hi. Thanks for the talk. It was a, a flat network, right? It was not uh, segregated into VLANs or anything. All devices you could see and all devices could see each other. No, I was in separate VLAN. And if the network uses VLAN, VRP, use VRP, you deploy VRP. But if on a router there are several VLANs, I can have an impact on the VLAN uh, where I, I'm located. If I uh, do a spoofing attack, I will uh, propagate only in that VLAN. I will not be able to capture the uh, traffic from the 200th VLAN because I'm in 120th VLAN. Okay, okay, so it's uh, domain limited. R right, right. VRP uses multicast uh, packets, but because of bit one in the MAC address of the destination, this traffic can be positioned as broadcast. That's why we see this MCAST as broadcast. This attack propagates only inside uh, a VLAN. Hello. I was wondering about the uh, uh, remix scenario, why that second is to choose between uh, deploying a Linux-based machine and uh, a Mikrotik machine. Well, in order to get uh, L2 access to the target network where the Windows machine is uh, located, it's a very specific vector that um, I came by uh, by accident, really. It's another opportunity to do L2 tunneling against a machine, uh, Windows machine. Why? Um, well, Windows is resistant to L2 uh, tunneling. You can use OpenVPN or P2P or L2TP, but I found a new exotic path. And I, I've proven that it's a practical technique in production. With this vector, you build an L2 tunnel to the machine itself. To use medium 6 responder, arm spoofing, etc. Well, what about the Linux machine? It's not possible to do the same with the Linux machine? Well, it doesn't make any sense to run a virtual machine against a Linux machine, because Linux knows tunneling, everything comes out of the box. But uh, Windows in the classical version doesn't support uh, GRE or VXLAN. Maybe you can do it on a Windows server, but probably the protocols will be available to the uh, attacker in post-exploitation when you set up specific roles. So it's not very pra practical uh, against Linux machines. This vector will work, but you don't need to set up a virtual machine. You just set up a, a VXLAN interface, you set up a bridge. Can you come to me later? I will share with you a demo when I did it against a Linux machine. I have another question. The license, one megabit per second. Uh, any problems with this restriction? Well, actually, yes. The throughput capacity is cut after one day. 
gives you one megabit. I don't think that this is going to create huge problems inside the network because basically this is intended uh, for uh, protocol abuse. I don't think that anyone sane will use this channel, will use this link. Uh, one day after SHR was deployed, would, would be sending big amounts of data. If not mistaken, in C2 scenarios, it's you can't do everything via one, one link. One link, uh, the first one is used to for controls, for commands, and the second one is used for filtering. No more questions? No further questions.